The history between MTV and pro wrestling is quite interesting. MTV had worked with the WWF in the past to help launch the Rock and Wrestling Connection, an initiative that saw the world of celebrity and entertainment blend into the world of pro wrestling to great results. MTV at one point also had their very own promotion, Wrestling Society X, that was so badly done that words won't ever do it justice. What you may not know though is that MTV and WCW also had a partnership beginning in 1998 with MTV presenting special WCW shows during a time when WCW was slipping away during the ratings battle. One of these shows, the WCW MTV Ultimate Video Bash, occurred on the 9th of May 1998 in New York City. It turned out to be a complete debacle. The 3 hour show was cut down to 2 hours thanks to heavy rain, nobody bothered to show up, and only one match took place. The initial idea for the WCW Ultimate Video Bash was a tournament, with each wrestler in said tournament representing a musician or a music video or something, and the winner of the tournament would be crowned the inaugural WCW MTV Champion. They even had a belt made for this, but more on that later. Let's take a look at this entire show then, and we'll see ourselves if it's as bad as what everybody says it is. Just a heads up, I've never seen this entire show until now. I've heard about it, but I've never sat down and watched it the whole way through, so the scripting of this video will contain my thoughts as the event progresses. So my download of this show starts right away with high voltage coming to the ring. You'll see here that High Voltage are representing Will Smith, and you'll also see that no fan showed up for this show at all. Apparently there was enough space here to hold 2000 people, but only around 100 fans showed up. We see the commentary team here, they are stuck in a tent with plastic bags covering their monitors, and none of them look happy. Back in the ring, the public enemy come out. A promo airs where Johnny Grunge tells us that the public enemy are going to win this one for LL Cool J. And yeah, what on earth is going on here? MTV guys and cameramen stay in the ring during the match. Carson Daly is on the microphone talking to the audience and trying to call a wrestling match, while the public enemy and high voltage try their best to wrestle in the rain with all these people in the way. Just look at this, this was a WCW show in 1998. It looks like a really poor independent show. Anyway, the match ends in just over a minute and a half, it's just too dangerous to wrestle in this kind of rain. I'll say this much, the fans that did show up are going absolutely nuts, but you'd have to be absolutely nuts to attend this show anyway. The commentary team tells us that because the public enemy won, LL Cool J then advances to the next round, so it looks like the wrestlers represent a musician or band, and if the wrestler progresses in the tournament, the musician also progresses in the tournament. What even is this? The next match is promoted as Old School vs New School. Run DMC is represented by Barry Darso, yes Demolition Smash and the Repo Man, and here we have Booker T. Barry came out in full gear, whereas Booker T was wise enough to wear a bright yellow raincoat. A guy begins brushing the rain out of the ring as the competitors look on, and I can only imagine that Booker T and Barry Darso said before this match, yeah we aren't working out there, no thank you. Both men are then briefly interviewed by Carson, with both men saying that the artists that they represent are the best, it's just, I don't know, this is ridiculous on so many levels. Hearing Barry Darso talk about how Run DMC are the original hip hop act, and hearing Booker T talk about how the old school rap scene is over, in the middle of a wrestling ring, in the rain with 100 fans, this is definitely a low point in WCW history right here, and we are only 5 minutes minutes into this show. We are then told that music videos will play and viewers at home can call a phone number to vote for their favourite video. At 95 cents a call, the viewers at home will be the ones deciding the winners, no wrestling match here folks. So this was the plan then, fill up the remainder of the show with music videos and short promos. 
WCW and MTV jobbed out here to the weather. Speaking of which, did nobody bother to check a weather report? Well, this makes my job easier, I guess. Second round KO and King of Rock by Run DMC is played as wrestling fans around the world rush to their phones to vote on which was the best. During the videos, the wrestlers would appear and continue cutting promos, but they just talked about how their artist was better than their opponents. This is the point where any self-respecting wrestling fan changes the channel, or in my case, stops the video. But no, let's see this through until the end. Booker T wins, I would have voted for Run DMC myself, but anyway, on with the show. We see this dude here who battled the elements to see his favourite superstar Diamond Dallas Page. Hey, you know, who are you looking forward to seeing today? Diamond Dallas Page, can you feel the pain? Yeah. See what I mean? They're off the hook. And then Public Enemy vs Booker T is next, and Booker T again gets the win. Back at the commentary tent and Tony Schiavone says, sarcastically, that it would be great to get these musicians in a wrestling ring on WCW Nitro. Brad Armstrong comes out to represent Metallica and DDP comes out representing Van Halen. I'm pretty sure that there's also less people in the audience now than 15 minutes ago. DDP and Brad Armstrong cut their promos with Brad Armstrong saying he will put the Armstrong curse on DDP. Yeah. Also, why is Nick Patrick here? Is he officiating the voting? Anyway, Van Halen defeats Metallica, DDP goes through and he also drops a diamond cutter after Brad tried to attack him from behind. I got super excited seeing a wrestling move here. Macho Man Randy Savage comes out next to promote his match with Bret Hart at Slamboree 1998. No way was the Macho Man taking part in this mess of a tournament. Hugh Morris comes out next to represent David Lee Roth and Sick Boy of Raven's Flock is representing David Boy. David Lee Roth gets the vote. Kidman represents Salt and Peppa and Ultimo Dragon represents Madonna. There's confusion here. Kidman and Dragon get their artists mixed up with Kidman saying he represents Madonna. And yeah, does it really matter at this point? Ultimo Dragon is freezing his dragon balls off here too, poor guy. And after the vote, Carson questions which wrestler represents which artist. And Kidman is like, you tell me. Madonna gets the win and so does Ultimo Dragon. DDP vs Hugh Morris next and at least we get to see Kimberly. DDP delivering the goods with wrestling moves and now Kimberly too. DDP wins, yeah let's just get through this as quickly as possible. Glacier comes out next and now I'm interested again. Glacier is representing Pearl Jam and his opponent, Raven, is representing Courtney Love. Raven takes a jab at the whole show here when he says Apparently the only way to get on MTV is to either be a corporate rock puppet or to have to stand out in the rain like a ridiculous fool. Yeah! All right. And when Courtney Love wins the vote by 65%, Raven also says, Wow, how lucky am I? We win. All right, we're going to take a short break. So Raven steals the show and makes this a little bit more entertaining. Thank you, Raven. Ultimo Dragon comes out next and tells us that Madonna is good. I think uh, Madonna go win. Madonna is good. While Raven again lets us know he wants nothing to do with this show. Well, let me get this straight. If I lose this round, I can leave now. So vote for Madonna. We then get a hype video for Madonna vs Courtney Love, talking about their apparent feud in the 90s, confirming here that the voting was rigged or it's a huge coincidence that Love and Madonna would clash in this WCW MTV train wreck. Raven again delivers the goods when Courtney Love wins. Raven you won, you gotta be excited about that huh? They're both a bunch of whiny tramps, who really cares who won? Honestly thank god for Raven. His honesty here at least brought some entertainment to this show. DDP and Van Halen defeat Booker T, so it's DDP vs Raven in the final. We get to see the belt that will be bestowed upon our winner, and yeah, not exactly a Reggie Parks piece of work. Raven does not show up for the final. Kidman says that Raven had left because he was sick of the weather and sick of this show in general. Raven is not the only one. 
Anyway, I'm sure you're all eager to find out who won this thing, and Van Halen defeats Courtney Love in the final, and DDP becomes the MTV Video Champion, or whatever it's called. Honestly, they don't make it clear. Kidman tries to steal the belt, leading to DDP dropping him with a diamond cutter. Raven then comes out to attack Paige, but Paige gets the better of him. Honestly, the ring is so slippery that it looks dangerous. Raven nearly slipped a few times during the scuffle. After the beatdown, Raven is seen laughing outside the ring. And with mercy, the show ends. And that's it. What I've just described to you was this WCW and MTV show. That was it. Somehow, somewhere, the name of the whole show gets changed, as by the end of the presentation, the show was now called The MTV Ultimate Video Feud. I don't know how this happened, they began the show calling it The Ultimate Video Bash, and at the end, it was The Ultimate Video Feud. Also, when DDP won the MTV belt, Tony Schiavone says that DDP will now show up in WCW holding his new title, which of course didn't happen. This show, all in all, is easily one of the worst presentations I've ever sat through that had the balls to call itself a wrestling show. Of course, some of the blame has to go on the weather, but you'd think that there would be a plan B. And by a plan B, I mean some sort of cover for the ring. After the public enemy match, you can tell that everyone involved just threw in the towel, from the MTV staff to the WCW crew and even the wrestlers. Dave Meltzer reported on this show in his Observer Newsletter, one of the only publications to cover this event. I normally wouldn't put Meltzer quotes in these videos, but he was one of the only people that covered the show back in 1998. Here's what Meltzer said. The MTV special on the 9th of May from Chelsea Pier in Manhattan was so bad that all standards of bad for this industry have now become passé. The real problem is it was pouring rain and windy as hell and the event was held outdoors. There were about 40 to 50 fans watching. Announcers Tony Schiavone and Zabisco acted as if they didn't want to be there. There was supposed to be 8 matches in a 3 hour special but due to the rain they only had one match, a 90 second bout where Public Enemy beat High Voltage and the rest were bad interviews, bad angles and bad weather. The show ended up being cut to 2 hours and it was so bad that the scheduled replay showing of it later that evening was cancelled. The show offered the audience to call a 900 line to vote for bands with the winners advancing in a tournament and the final winner would become the MTV champion. Kevin Nash and Chris Benoit were both supposed to be there but Nash said that he wasn't about to miss Mother's Day and Benoit said he needed to go to Calgary. There may be some problems stemming from this event, due to it being put together without commission authorization and some participants allegedly hadn't been licensed. 